So Joe Biden is coming up on a one-year anniversary of his presidency. Um, and he has some things to show for it. And a lot of, from his perspective, uh, uh, failures. But, but, you know, from an objective perspective, uh, from the perspective of a Democrat, um, he has two, I'd say, two main achievements uh, that he has uh, succeeded in. Well, I'd say three main achievements. One is the big stimulus package that he passed in, uh, w when he first came into office, one of the first things he did. Of course, it was a stimulus package that was really kind of supported by Trump, uh, you know, and, and, and the Republicans didn't really fight it because they're wimps and because they're pathetic and, and so on. Uh, so uh, uh, we got those, what was it, $1.7 trillion. Uh, you know, we've, we've got inflation to thank for that. So his success, uh, his success and Trump's success with his stimulus packages have all led to inflation that we're living in right now. If you combine the three stimulus package, the two under Trump and the one under Biden, plus the, uh, uh, the Federal Reserve policy, uh, what you get is inflation, and that's what we have today. So there's a huge cost to the, um, uh, the success, if you will, of the Biden administration. Ooh. Biden, um, uh, Biden uh, succeeded in passing the stimulus package. Uh, but, of course, we all lost as a consequence. He then succeeded in passing an infrastructure bill, which, again, supportive of inflation, supportive of deficits, supportive of government spending through the kazoo. And I will bet you this bill will involve, once it's actually put into place, in terms of programs, will involve massive numbers of bridges to nowhere, huge amounts of enriching corrupt contractors, corrupt government officials, corrupt people who participate in anything to do with um, others. Uh, but then Biden, of course, has now run into, so Biden has brought us inflation. That's his big success. Now, he got help from Trump. I'm not saying it's only Biden's fault, and he got help from the Fed, but Biden is, is definitely a part of that. Uh, but Biden has failed by his own standard. He did not get his big social programs agenda passed, uh, other 1.7 trillion bill. He has not gotten his so-called voting rights bills passed. Indeed, they have failed. He has not achieved any of his goals with regard to COVID. He has not gotten vaccine mandates passed. The Supreme Court just overturns those. He has not seen a dramatic decrease in COVID that he expected and promised uh, to achieve. COVID is actually higher now than it's ever been before. And more people died of COVID while Biden was president than died of COVID while Trump was president. Not that that's good news for Trump. Uh, a lot of that is just, you know, Biden's hubris and Biden's uh, arrogance and the idea that you can centrally plan and you can centrally enforce and you can cram down our throats government policies and that that is going to solve a, a, an issue like, um, uh, like COVID. Um, Biden has governed. Oh, the, the third success that he had, I'm sorry, third success is, is he's put in place a lot of really bad regulators, really bad people who are, who are doing the progressives bidding in terms of making doing business in America hard, in terms of uh, obstructing markets, in terms of making us less efficient and, and, and less supportive. So... Um, that was the other success, in quotes. Because every Biden success is a failure for the United States of America, is a failure for all of us, is a failure for our standard of living, quality of life, purchasing power of our, purchasing power of our dollars. It's surprising to me how little people seem to care about the inflation that we have right now. 7% is a lot. The purchasing power of your dollar is declining by 7% a year. It could be more, depending on your basket of goods. Right. Um, all right, let's see. So Biden is failing right now. Uh, his uh, approval numbers are uh, Trump levels. They're in the low 40%. Uh, by, according to one poll recently, it was as low as 33%. 
uh, his disapproval numbers, the uh, uh, numbers of people who disapprove of him, are over 50%, again, Trump-level numbers from Trump's presidency. Uh, on every front, people don't like what's happening. The economy is not improving the way people expect it. Um, job creation is not as high anywhere near as people expected coming out of the COVID crisis. Inflation is way higher than anybody anticipated. The economy is not doing well. And we could very well be heading towards stagflation because, to a large extent, because of the Biden administration's regulatory policies, which are going to inhibit the ability of the U.S. economy to in flexible fashion to adapt, adjust and adapt to the changing inflation, to changing demand and supply requirements, and going to bring about stagflation. We're also experiencing shortages because of supply chain issues, and we're experiencing inflation. But every front, the economy, other than maybe employment, but even employment, we still have fewer Americans employed today than before uh, COVID. So on every front, the U.S. economy is not doing well. It's everything you would have expected with the Biden presidency. He is failing on every front. And then he went out to Georgia to give this speech about voting rights. And he sounded, it was almost like he was channeling Trump, but flip side, right? I mean... He, it was like he was hysterical. Jim Crow 2.0. Really? What are you talking about? Yes, I think there are real issues with voting in America. Yes, I, I am actually worried about the 2024 election, given Trump and given what Trump is willing to do to win. But that's, that's more about the people who are going to be elected to certain voting positions, and, and I blame the Republicans primarily for that, but you're not going to fix that. And you don't have to have, you don't have to federalize election law in order to fix that. And once you federalize election law, imagine what happens when a Trump-like person gets elected and they have control over these laws. It's a really bad idea to federalize election law. I mean, one of the nice things is to have these experiments in different states. And, and he went off the charts in terms of his, his craziness. Even Dick Durbin, who's not exactly a conservative, a leftist Democrat, said that, you know, maybe the president went a little too far. Yeah, these people are nuts. And what's surprising about Biden is that he's always been a centrist his entire career. And yet... It's almost like, I don't know, maybe he's too old, too senile, too uninterested, um, too bored. I don't know what it is. Doesn't have enough energy. Maybe because he doesn't, he's not willing. He has no capacity. No capacity. To, um, to actually govern. So he's letting his progressives do everything for him. And they're crazy. The, the left wing of the Democratic Party is off, is, is completely nuts. And he's letting them dominate. And instead of actually trying to govern from the center, negotiating with Republicans and trying to get bills passed, which I don't like, I wouldn't like those bills, but instead of being what you'd expect a centrist Joe Biden to be, he is he's letting the left dominate. And as a consequence, he's losing. And he's really going to lose uh, in the midterm election in 2024 if he continues on this path. Because uh, the American people are not rabid leftists. They're not way out there on the left. They're just not. And they're going to reject that. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. 
show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.